Right, ladies and gentlemen, today we have something a bit different. We have a Tyrol. It's the P34. As we saw it in the mid-70s. And this particular one is the second edition of a whole range of P34s Tamiya has brought out. First one in 1977, then the first repop in 1993. And there might have been new parts. Then again, 2003, 2010, 2011. And the last one, uh, very popular these days. You see quite a few builds on Facebook in 2000 and 17. Now this is, as I said, the 1993 edition. It still gives you the electric motor uh, uh, option right over there. It's not in the kit. Uh, you probably had to buy that extra. It is the Jody Checter and Depayer um, kit. And anyway, that's what the decals are all about. So it's an old, old kit. Let's have a look at it, shall we? Talk amongst yourself. Just need to get that stuff out of here. Right. And as we always do, we start with the instruction sheet. Front page is right over there. Picture of Tyrrell, who has a uh, it says to me, I has been produced from original works drawings and with my full cooperation, I thoroughly recommend it. There we go. Thanks, Ken Tyrrell. And there are, uh, in different languages, a bit of history. And here we are. I don't see a color call out. Oh, it gives the color in the instructions itself. And then it gives you a bit of description here as well. It's always... Always interesting what they write there, translations. And you see there's quite a bit of detail at the engine which needs to be glued together. Right over there, we'll look at the parts just now. Those chrome parts can have to be redone. Might have. There you go, gives you a photo of the engine, gives you a good idea what it should look like because these engines are obviously quite complicated if you're used to the normal rebel V8 and they are obviously simple in comparison. There you go, you can have a look at that instruction sheet. It looks it looks uncomplicated enough. Problem obviously always is with the uh, the colors in there which are mentioned over here even um, it's nice in a way but it also makes it very busy. So, um, yeah, there's the final assembly. Here we go. Once you get there, you are dry. And then we have either the Jody Checter or the Patrick Defayer, um decals. It's either number three or number four. You can choose that, and then at the back it gives you a rundown of all the sprues, which we are going to have a look at in a minute. But before we do that, let's have a quick look at the decals. You see them over here, a bit on the yellow side, so they need a bit of sun, which I will get. And then, uh, otherwise they look Rightish, you know, Tamiya decals always take them with a, but they don't look cracked or anything, so we'll see what they do. Uh, hopefully, they work out all right. Go all the markings, and uh, yeah, we'll work it from there, put it in the sun, and see what they do. Let's have a look at the tires. Here are the four front tires. And then we have a couple of these uh, axe holders right over there. Front tires are seamed in the middle. They have they have Goodyear branding on. I hope you can see that. Anyway, there's a Goodyear branding on, and that's very nice. And you can you can work with that. Then we have this bag, which has all kinds of stuff here. Let's put that out has this part, which I'm 
not sure what it is. It has a spring and a gear, a screw. Might have something to do with if you want to put an electric engine in. It has a couple of pipes right over here, which obviously you can use for the engine. It has two steel axles. It has a bit of glass. And then these two nice, fat, soft Goodyear rear tires. Alrighty then, that is an interesting little bag, but as I say, I've never done a Formula One car before, so it's all new to me. Right. And let's have a look at the chrome parts, which obviously are not that many. Here we go. You can see them. And yeah, there are no engine chrome parts, so this is good. You chrome them yourself. Thank you very much. Uh, anyway, it doesn't... Oh, no, there are these intakes. And look where they are. Oh, yeah, these have to be all re chromed because when you cut them off... I mean, this is... This you will see quite clearly, so you will, you will have to re chrome those. I'm afraid I'll probably rechrome this one as well. So yeah, there's a bit of a rechrome uh, on if you don't want to see the cutoff points. Um, if you don't worry about that, then obviously it isn't. Right, let's have a look at the plastic. We start with this one, which is engine parts mostly, suspension. Um, they are all the different radiators. There we go, I remembered. And yeah, uh, brakes right over here. There we go. Brakes, brakes, calibers, calibers. Yeah, nice, nice. Not too bad. Not too bad at all. In '77. So I guess the mold is still from '77 when they did the first repop. '91 or '93? '93. Right, uh, more parts, wheels, front wheels, I would assume, A-arms, other suspension parts, right over here, a roll bars, and uh, side skirts, right over here, a bit of coil springs, right over there. Alrighty. Then here we get to the engine parts proper, uh, two engine halves, we even get the figure, Two different heads, depending on which you want to do. Don't know if the others also have the figure, but here it is. Then you have the rear brakes right over there. Need some tender loving care there. Part of the engine and engine mountings on here, mostly the bigger part, and there is also some coil over shocks. Then let's have a look here. Here we have. Uh, more of the engine exhaust parts uh, and uh, yeah, very small parts which come to the engine. This will all be very, very interesting, will it not? And uh, it'll certainly keep us busy. I like it. I like it. It's uh, it uh, certainly looks good. There is a flash on it, so and you'll see there are ejector pin marks which you certainly need to fill. That kind of stuff. So that's there. You know, just uh, be prepared for that. It's not horrible, but it's there. We have the main chassis here, right over here. A bit of detail here as well, as you can see there. Detailed very nicely. Yeah, on the bottom you won't see that, I would assume, because. We cover most of it with this bottom plate right over here. And uh, there are the wings, front wing, back wing, driver compartment and the side covers. All in all, for a 93 kit, looks reasonably clean. It's the first repop, as we said. And uh, part, of the, part of my wing falling down already, we don't want that. Okay, and uh, yeah, it doesn't look too bad. It doesn't look too bad at all. I've seen worse. For a 1977 mold, popped in 1993, that's not bad at all. And yes, uh, gave you a bit of an in one in the Turtle P34 six-wheeler. 
If you buy the newest version, I think most of the parts are very similar, um, apart from the decals and, and some uh, some of them are flatter in front and some of them are a little bit higher. But yeah, otherwise you will find very similar parts in those different kit boxes. And here we go, we had a look at the Turrell P34 six-wheeler and uh, it will be obviously lots of fun building this. Thanks very much for watching. Hope you guys have a good time and greetings from Cape Town.